Well, we continue here tonight. Gold miner Harmony planning to invest in renewables as part of its decarbonization strategy, the company says. It's important for the sector's future. We're joined by Harmony Gold's Jared Kutzer. Jared, you're the head of investor relations at Harmony Gold. Of course, a project like this needs a lot of investment. Before we get to how you're going to be able to finance all of this, let's just start off with the fact that you have a big mining company now saying renewables renewables is actually the way to go. Yes, hi. Thank you, Cathy. Thanks for hosting us. Um, indeed, I mean, it's a big step forward for Harmony and I think a very positive step for the country. It's a project which we've been looking at for a while now. It didn't suddenly just arrive on our doorstep. It's mm -hmm. been years in the making and um, there's 30 megawatt renewable plants in the free state. It's our phase one of a three-phase renewable approach. Um, so it's, it's, very, it's very exciting and I think really um, something which we're looking forward to getting involved in and seeing how we can further this renewable energy drive. Of course, I imagine that one of the things that you have to look at closely is what are the risks of this mm. transition and how do you deal with them as a company? Speak to us about some of those. I mean, everything that we do is as a risk approach to it. We have mm. to look at all the embedded risks. Um, this is certainly one of those projects which checks all the right boxes in terms of um, decarbonizing the business, reducing our costs and also improving our sustainability. That's one thing which we look at. All our, all our projects need to be looked at holistically, and this is really an exciting project in that it, it alleviates our um, reliance on, on fossil fuels, but it also helps de-risk the business, driving our costs down in the long run. So mm -hmm. very much a, um, a project which checks all those boxes. Mm. Of course, when we talk about renewable, renewable energy, some people will then, especially for mm. a company like yours, some people will talk about, well, um, in as far as the scale that we need and um, you know, ensuring that that base load power supply yeah. is credible in, in the long run. Mm. How, how are you dealing with that? I mean, base load is important, mm. and I think it would be um, very short-sighted to think we can simply switch over to renewables or solar-based power for our, our energy needs. I mean, we consume about 500 megawatts of, of electricity a, a day, so it's, it's, it's large. But what we can do is we can take those incremental steps in the right mm -hmm. direction, and this mm -hmm. is certainly a, a first step. As I said, this is a 30 megawatts. Um, we're actually um, procuring our energy through a PPA. It's a 15-year PPA agreement, um, and will be built off balance sheet. So this is with the initial plan. Phase two is for 137 megawatts, where we've actually secured a green load through our funding partners to um, build 137 megawatts of renewable energy. So it, it does escalate quite quickly um, and certainly builds a lot of um, uh, you know, capacity to, to generate solar power. How much money is it all going to cost you? It's a fair amount. Um, as, as I said, this first phase is being done mm -hmm. off balance sheet. Um, the second phase, I mean, we, we haven't got the exact numbers given. It's, it's still a, mm -hmm. a way out. But, but we're looking, you know, looking to, to utilize this green loan, which is a one and a half billion rand green loan, to, to partially fund this project. So I think that will probably cover most of the funding um, as the planning currently stands. Mm -hmm. um, but um, with, you know, as we know, escalations in inflation and all these things which do come into the mix, um, what we have to look at is how much energy we're going to, or costs we're going to save in the long run. And I think that's really the exciting part is we can deploy this capital for renewables, but we recoup that, um, we're looking at about a three-year payback on these things. So it's, very, you know, it's a very exciting project. It's going to, of course, unlock a great deal of economic activity in the areas where you'll be investing. Mm. Uh, which are some of those provinces that are likely to benefit? Phase one now is in the free state. Mm. So we're looking at three 10 megawatt projects in the free state. Phase two, we haven't mapped exactly where we're going to put the plants, but it'll be, it'll be in line with our longer-term mines. Um, the real benefit is for the communities and, uh, you know, and Harmony as well. I, I, I don't think we will see too much spare capacity being generated in the near term, but as and when our mines reach the end of their life, there's obviously the, the ability to, to, to uh, supply the communities and, and reverse that power into the grid. I suppose the benefit comes from the fact that then you won't need as much uh, electricity supply from ESCOM as you probably, as you previously would have been using, which may free up a lot of that power. Mm. So what's also happening is we've got a, a number of very older, older life assets in our, in our portfolio. Mm. Those are reaching the end of their life. So naturally we'll be reducing our demand as these mines close. 
so you'll see a general, uh, a more uh, balanced split between renewables and fossil-based fuel, just as naturally as time goes on. But our plan is to actually reduce our, our reliance on fossil fuels and to get to carbon zero by 25, do you, 2045. Do you think that this is going to help to change the tone when it comes to the approach that big industry has mm. to, in particular, traditional power. Because even though we know that renewables are the future, there's still a lot of resistance yeah. um, to making that move. I think it's a, it's a mindset shift. Mm. You know, we, we're, we, we miners, we've, you know, for 70 years we've been digging holes and you know, pulling gold out the ground. And now we have to shift into the idea of re, uh, producing energy, renewable energy. And I think that is something which took some time to get our head around. Mm -hmm. uh, when we initially pursued this project, we, we weren't sure that the, the metrics were right to do it on balance sheet. As we've done our planning and gone through the, the various cycles, we realized that it actually does make sense to take it on and do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a number of initiatives as well. We've secured some uh, sustainability-linked KPIs with our financing to further drive these renewables and with a plan to actually have a renewable energy mix of 20% by FY25. So we've got a number of incentives that have actually been embedded in our funding to further drive uh, decarbonisation, renewable energy and also water, water use. Would you be trying to look for more incentives from a government perspective? I think what the government, government needs to facilitate is the reduction of red tape. That's mm -hmm. really what, what, what I think we look at. We obviously partner with the government, the DMRE, and to want to drive these projects. It's really about just removing the, the, the obstacles so that we can facilitate, facilitate these projects and further roll out uh, renewable energy projects. All right. Jared, thanks for coming into studio. Certainly something that we'll be keeping a close eye on. Uh, Jared Kotze is the head of investor relations at Harmony Gold.